Okay, this is Warwick Kappa, the Lean Mean Excitement Machine, blonde hair, blue eyed, ready for takeoff. For small business, big marketing. Tune in now for Wizard Kappa. You won't be disappointed. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reid. But you, so much more importantly, are a motivated small business owner ready to crank out some great marketing. And that's just what we do around here. That is why you are tuning in, I assume. Really good show today. Fun show, funny show, uh, and a show full of taking action. My guest, Warwick the Wiz Kappa, as you would have uh, identified at the top end of the show there. Uh, For those who don't know who that is, if you are listening outside the world of AFL football or outside of Australia, I will explain who that is shortly. Uh, I've got some listener feedback, some really good listener feedback. Um, I have been seated. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? But I have been seated, and I'll explain what that means and uh, what uh, what it has led to. And I do want to talk about taking action. It's something that keeps popping up in uh, my marketing world and I'm sure your marketing world and inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Uh, It is all about taking action. That's where success lies. So I want to talk about that. Let's get stuck right in. Small Business Big Marketing with Tim Reid. Okay, so as I said, I have been seated. Now, I've spoken about seating previously and I've had a number of guests on the show that have been very good at seeding. What do I mean by that? Seeding when you are interviewed is the ability to drop uh, your business name, your website address, some little kind of nugget that will direct listeners back to your your business in some way, shape or form. Um, uh, Seeding is also where uh, someone may send the creator of some media, i.e. like me, a podcaster, a gift uh, of some sort. And I think in a previous uh, editorial a few weeks ago, I suggested that, you know, maybe some car manufacturer could send me a car to test drive or an airline could send me on a holiday to review, you know, the customer service at a resort on a tropical island or something. That hasn't happened. But... (laughs) What has happened is a long-time listener in Lena, Lena Van Ray, has seeded me with some toilet paper. Yep, toilet paper. Poo tickets, as they are affectionately, affectionately known. Now, here's the letter I got from the lovely Lena. She says, Dear Timbo, huge fan of the show. Love your work. I love listening to your podcasts that are dripping with gold while I paint my tables jog or walk to my cool little office to run my own business. She says, I would like to recommend a funny and very clever business owner who helped start Who Gives a Crap? And his name's Simon Griffiths. And now this note that I'm reading was accompanied by a box with six rolls of poo tickets. Now, uh, Lena goes on to describe uh, Who Gives a Crap toilet paper as coming with 1,200% more puns than normal toilet paper. In fact, this is what it says on the packaging of the toilet paper. Uh, It donates 50% of their profits to fund sanitation projects. So it's a a business with a social conscience. Uh, Simon, the owner, has a passion for toilet humour. Oh, we've got something in common, Simon. And uh, in uh, she says here, for them to bust open their first production of toilet paper, they needed to raise $50,000. This was done with ease with Simon's funny marketing campaign where he sat on a toilet for 50 hours until people crowdfunded the project. And there's a YouTube video to go with that, which I'll put in the show notes, team, for uh, episode 194. Go over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and you can see that marketing stunt. But uh, so clever, Lena. You kind of seated me. You kind of got my attention to get Simon on the show, and uh, and I will do that because it sounds like a fun story. And uh, thanks for the for, you know the six uh, the six rolls of toilet paper. You can never do with it. You can never have enough of that. And Lena, thanks for your uh, support too. You've got a great business, Bike and Blend dot com dot au. B i k e n 
blend.com.au. And Lena's business, uh, she supplies bikes to events where people hop on these bikes. They should be called bikes, shouldn't they? And these bikes are attached to blenders, and you can make your own juices and stuff. So clever little business there, a fun little business. Love your work, Lena. Thanks for your support. Now, as you know, team, this podcast is supported. It is made possible by the very good folk at, that's right, I heard you, Net Registry. And they are here to help you nail all your online marketing needs. And some you didn't even know you had. Whether it be registering a domain, website design and hosting, helping you get found on Google with some clever SEO, aka search engine optimization. They can even set you up with an email marketing campaign. You've got to love that. Ensuring you have a decent digital footprint is critical when marketing your business. And this goes way beyond just having a website. So head over to netregistry.com.au today and see how they can get your online marketing sorted. It'll be much cheaper and easier than you think. And tell them Timbo sent you. Now, this is a topic that continues to rear, not so much its ugly head, it's not ugly at all, but it continues to raise its head inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Uh, Whenever I speak to a group of small business owners somewhere in the world, which is happening every week of my life at the moment, it's all about the ability or the lack of ability to take action. Now, action is where the magic is for all small business owners in regards to their marketing. You can do all the research you like about Google AdWords or getting your website right or starting a networking strategy or booking an ad in the local paper or doing a letterbox drop. You can find out as much as you want, but unless you actually do it, unless you actually take the action, then it's all academic. And you know what? Strive for production, not perfection. Production, get out there, produce stuff, get it out there, and then start to make changes if it doesn't work. But don't wait for things to be perfect. Get stuff out there. So I got this note from the Fat Badger, a.k.a. Bruce McLeod, a longtime listener of the show and a wonderful uh, commenter inside the show notes in the, the blog posts of each episode. So uh, thanks for that, Bruce. But Bruce got wind of the fact that uh, he uh, that I was going, I was, ch- I was trying to get the Wolf of Wall Street on the show, and uh, he said, "Look, he, I've, he sent me an email. He said, look, I, I went and saw him, gave me a bit of sum- bit of a summary of what he learned from that. And at the end of this email, Bruce says, the main message from the event I attended is take massive action. Simple enough, but for some business owners, very hard to do. Ain't that the truth, Bruce? Why is that? Procrastination, maybe. How many people have great ideas that they ultimately decide weren't so great, but never really put in the effort required to allow their idea to gain traction? It may be time for those of us who gave up too quickly or too easily to review past ideas and take massive action. They are beautiful words there, Bruce. And in fact, I then lead on, I then direct you to forum member Phil. Phil has a business called iNightingale, and it is a, I'll give you the web address actually, iNightingale.net, and it's a home care education business. Phil uh, is a trained nurse, and he is now educating carers on how to look after their loved ones in their homes. And uh, Phil made comment about taking massive action recently inside the forum. His headline to this post is, just do it. And I think you'll find this inspiring. He says, well, where do I start? I was all miserable about not getting anywhere. I put a comment on one of the podcasts and Tim responded with, the magic is in the action, Phil. Don't wait for the stars to align. Just do it. Do something. I did. I absolutely said that. I absolutely believe it. Phil goes on to say, well, that was three weeks ago. Since then, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase this to not go into great detail as to what Phil has specifically achieved, but he has booked a meeting with a person of influence, which led to one warm lead and five to six new pieces of content 
and meeting someone lovely. Number two, he will be hosting a radio show starting in August this year. Number three, he has a grant to start a grant to start working with in July. Number four, finally found his big question that is he's going to answer in all his marketing in order to clear up his focus. Number six, he got a keynote speaking gig at a conference. And he, number seven, helps six families to care for their parents at home. And he feels bloody great. You know what, team? It is all about taking action. If you're sitting on an idea for a business or a marketing idea that you think, oh, should should I or shouldn't I? You know what? Try it out. Give it a go. If you don't, you'll never know. Okay, let's get stuck into today's guest, Warwick the Wiz Kappa. Now, for those of you who are not followers of Aussie Rules Football or who don't live in Australia, you are going to need to Google Warwick Kappa uh, to sort of get a sense, to see who he is, to see how he operates, how he looks. Uh, He's an interesting fella. He's an AFL superstar of the 1980s. He became famous due to the very tight shorts that he wore, the long blonde mullet haircut that he donned on the football field, and he also led a very flamboyant lifestyle, driving around in Ferraris and uh, living the half was Walker, uh, and he really did make a name for himself. He's a really good footballer too. Post-football, however, he continued to just have a real crack. He was on the TV show Neighbours. He made a guest appearance. He appeared in Penthouse magazine. He was on Celebrity Apprentice of recent years, Celebrity Big Brother. He got he, he was in the headlines for uh, having a fair bit of plastic surgery. He's had many business dealings. He's been a lollipop attendant, like, you know, at children's school crossings. On his website, he has he offers the services uh, of a Hens and Bucks Party MC, uh, corporate speaking, endorsements, comedy, weddings, you name it. He is, I said at the start, he's an opportunist. I, I, I love the fact that he just has a red hot go. Now, many of you who do know him are probably wondering, why would I get him on the Small Business Big Marketing Show? And that's a fair question. Two reasons. One is self-indulgent. I've laughed at and with Walker for many, many years. I, there's something magnetic about him. <laughs> it might say as much about me as it does about him, but he has made me laugh. And sometimes I wonder, am I laughing at him or with him? The fact is I've got a smile on my face. I also think he has made the most of what he's been given. He is an entrepreneur. He takes opportunities when they come along. And I kind of had this outstanding question in my mind as to whether, you know, is he a genius or is he or is it the opposite of genius? I don't want to say that word because I think it's mean. But um, I have come to think that he's not quite a genius, but he's certainly not stupid. He's running lots of little businesses. He's running his own little business. He's marketing it in his own way. And I think you'll find this interview really interesting. Uh, Walker talks quickly. He trips over his words sometimes. We talk over each other every now and then. But stick with it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Here he is, Warwick the Wiz Kappa. Warwick Kappa, you here for your satisfaction for small business. I'm the man. You are the man, How mate. Now, I have I have an audience, Warwick, uh, a global audience, and you're not going to believe it, but many don't know who you are. For the, so for listeners who don't, you go ahead and tell them who you are. They soon will, mate, because I'm actually a bit of a global sensation now. I've been big in America. I played a, um, a bit of a game over there years ago. I thought no one know me over there. And I saw so, so, so a lady in Chicago, and she goes, oh, I know you. You're that guy who looks like a wrestler, the good-looking barbarian guy with the tight shorts, and you wear no padding. You're amazing, and you sit on heads for a living. I said, yeah, Dallas, I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> so so she yeah, got that wrong? 
Yes, you got that wrong, but I've done a lot of different things to be serious. I've, well, well, why, I've yeah, well let, let's start from. I, I don't want to go through your life history, and I'm sure you don't either. But seriously, for listeners, you you uh, you're one of the biggest names in AFL football in the eighties. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. I've been milking it ever since. You know, yeah. I've been 20 years, and I'm probably still the most recognised name in the sport in Australia. So that's what um, Lou Richard said in his book. Um, he said I was the second most recognised sportsman in Australia behind Greg Norman, which is a nice accolade. And I think, um, to be serious, is I um, reinvent myself. I'm a little bit different. I do corporate talks around the world in Australia. Thanks to boomsales.com.au, they can book me and Big Trent. We do, <laughs> yeah. we do all the different uh, different venues like yourself around yeah. the world. Yeah. They can book me through WarwickCabin.net too. Oh, I'd you like are to a machine, it. mate. I, I, was, I, was I would gonna... like to, I would like to, I would like to leave that bit in WarwickCabin.net, <laughs> and you get you get me as a corporate, and you can get something out of your business. You can get um, a bit of comedy and a, and, a, and a way to get to get to your get to the people in the, uh, in economic society. To perform at the best level. Did you, you know, say in, in, in economic society? Yeah, we're trying to get the best What's... out of yourself. It's tough times, as you know, young man. It's oh. tough times out there. People are, people are hurting. And I think um, I said the message where you've got to stand out and be a bit different and not be scared of what people think of you. Warwick, tell Sorry, me about – you are a machine. You know what I, mean? I, I do, mate, and I want to come back to that. I, I um, You're a machine at milking things, and, I, I, you know, I reckon there's a lot of small business owners out there who leave money on the table, but, mate, I, I don't reckon you would have left a cent on any table. You you milk it. What's what's your secret to milking? I think just being um, good at selling yourself and being confident in yourself and confident in your own ability. That's like, you know, that's like in business because I've got shares in um, – and then it's um, uh, uh, a bit, bit decent place called Man What a Fuss. And I think um, the, the trend is changing in business uh, and also in pleasure where guys have to look after themselves. And they used to be embarrassed about getting getting Botox, getting their face fixed up and losing a bit of weight. Uh, but now uh, people want to look good and stand out a bit and try and get the best out of themselves. That's all about presentation, isn't it? And, and standing out among the crowd. You had a bit of, have like you had a bit of work done? Yeah, well, it's my company, so I, I have to. You just get yeah, I'm, I'm, 50, I'm 51 next week, but look about 37, so it's good. It's been great. <laughs> well, like I, like, I, like I say to my followers and the fans, there's no sitting on heads if you don't follow through for the goal, is there? Correct, you correct. That, well, exactly right. That's a footy analogy. Do you ever? Do you, you ever? Um, I, I had a lady on last week. She's the voice of Siri. So uh, Siri, you know, the Apple Siri. So, and we talked, her name's Karen Jacobson. We talked a lot about self-doubt and uh, she actually was crippled by anxiety for many years before she became successful. Do you, um, do you have any self-doubt or are you seriously, what we see is just this bloke who is completely in love with himself? Not real. Oh, I sort of am, but uh, I'm in love with everyone else too. I might be loving myself, but I'm also in love with other people and I like being down to earth because I've got, for millions of fans, but a lot of them, I probably got ten percent of haters. Where they go, I'm a bit, a bit of an arrogant wanker. And then they meet me and go, "Geez, top bloke, he's yep. just like me and you." Yeah. So once they get to know me, they I change their minds. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I was, the, I was doing the campaign for Quick Beds Flight Centre. I'll give you an example. And um, the cash cry was, "Yeah, we're a capper, AFL legend, a movie star. R- their rooms are great rates, they're cheap and easy, just like me." And that. It was like laugh, laugh, laughing at myself. Yep. But that went that, that, that went global around the world, and we got the company up by 160 percent. Would you, would you so, get paid for that, Kappa? Oh, uh, fair bit. Yeah, six figures and a bit more. But I was worth every cent. Love it. In awareness, I can't say too much. The tax man get me, but yeah, I did yeah. okay. Um, and then I was an Nando's man last year, where, where it says in my leopard skin jocks, I said, and the catch cry was, "Thanks to Sphere Agency, the sun shines out of your buns, not ours, Warwick." <laughs> Chicken tropical burger. So it's now, all it's all about believing in yourself, eh? Yeah, believing in yourself. And now this this week on the face of the boat show, and me and Brian Austin and the catch cry for this one, which is a great marketing too, yeah. is um, uh, Warwick Kappa get down to the Melbourne boat show and tell them we'll visit Kappa Centre and get a great deal. In second thoughts, don't tell them a centre at all and get a better deal. <laughs> B class celebrities, A class deals. Love it. See, now, never, now, never, 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 never be ashamed to laugh at yourself. I, I think that's great advice, and in fact, Walker, yeah. I've, I've, I've got a few. Uh, I've got a forum, and I've got a few members. I said to them last night, "Hey, listen, I'm talking to to Warwick Cap. Have you got any questions?" And there's some really insightful questions that have come through, which I'll share with you over the course of this this chat. But one is around yeah. um, one is around personal branding, and I've got. Uh, let, let's talk about that because I reckon you manage your brand so incredibly well, and I want to know. I don't know. 
Let's talk about how you do it. I've got Paul Smart, one of my forum members. He, he calls himself the professional wino. He says, um, watching, Walker, watching Warwick in The Celebrity Apprentice, I think he's a little smarter than his persona shouts. I would love to know yeah. if he has a formal written business plan and marketing plan, or is it, or does he fly from the seat of his pants? Does he get help, business coaching consultants, or does he study himself and read books? Jeez, mate, you're breathing into the phone heavy there too, by the way. It's I just want to spend 6K, that's why. Yeah, I just, I just got back. Yeah, so I like that. So tell us about like your managing your – it is a good question. Do you manage your personal yeah. brand, you know, to, to within an inch of its life or do you fly by the seat of your pants? Uh, probably a bit of both. I've um, started when I was 17. I had a fierce desire to lead, play league football, which I did. And then I had a fierce desire to make it in the media and be a little, a little different. So after my first interview, I've done about 70,000 cents. I know how to sort of manipulate it, uh, and I, I sort of know what I'm doing. So it's sort of a bit of a lunacy, but I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think you survive for 30 years without it. Mm. Plus, I've had some good help off a few good um, speakers and how to portray yourself. You have, have you? So who, 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 gives, you, who gives you advice? Well, I did, a, I did a lot of shows with Jacko. I'll actually give him a bit of rap, even though he's a bit of a lunatic, <laughs> Mark Jackson. He's Speaking of speaker. lunatics. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's my mentor, but he's, he's not a bad comedy speaker, so I did... Did a fair few shows of uh, Jacko over the years, mm-hmm. and um, also done a lot of um, business ones. You know, with Amway and uh, uh, with Trent from BoomSales dot com. Mm-hmm. He's he does uh, he does um, like corporates, so I do a lot of stuff with him. Mm-hmm. Where we go to um, NAB and ANZ, and we um, I'm actually going to be the face of uh, NAB. I'll give you a bit of a secret where I'm going to go into their um, into their place and get them all cheered up. You know, uh, so that- of National Australia Bank. Yeah, yeah, I've got a few. Yeah, so I've got a few good ideas there, and yeah. where we can get their get their people fired up because because yeah. people are getting depressed in there working long, long hours. Yes. So, and to answer, answer your, that guy's question, um, it's half me and I've half got a, got some good advice. You know. Right. So, so does that advice is that is that is that a kind of formal thing where you catch up with someone once a week, or you know you bounce an idea off someone, or they're watching you, they're watching your back the whole time? How does it work? Yeah, I've got a guy who so looks after. Looks after me. I've had some good managers. I've had, I've had Harry Miller, Max Marks, and um, you know, Edelston. Even though he's he's a bit unusual, but he's, he's done pretty well for himself. I've, yeah. had, I've had some usual usual mentors, and uh, Mike Willisy and um, Peter Hogan from Benset. Yeah, right. So just yeah, a lot of um, of uh, sort of venues done that in business. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, let's, let's, let's let's talk about business, because mate, go on. I, yeah, I'm actually doing a show tonight with Wayne Carey, so I, I do a lot of footy clubs and a lot of corporates, so it's going to be good. You, you uh, do also it. with Luke, Hod- Luke Hodge tonight at Maron Long Footy Club. So oh, I things. love the Hodgie. Yeah, for me, yeah, he'll be there. He'll, he'll, he'll be hanging off my every word, no doubt. Yeah, but mate, he'll be, he's, he's, pre- he's probably telling everyone right now that he's going to be doing a show with you. He'll be excited. I went to the basketball last month. I was a face of the Tigers. I was their mascot and... I've got more clubs than him, so he's a bit jealous, but it's okay. <laughs> Tell me, you do have a lot of – you've had a lot of businesses. You do do a lot. So let's talk about some of the businesses you've got happening now. You've got uh, – now, I understand you've, you're, uh, you've got a share in a BMW dealership. What else you got? Yeah, I'm sort of the face of um, BMW in South Yarra. Right. I um, do all their marketing, and I'm hopefully I'll be, I'm going to be their ambassador at BMW and Jeep. Right. I did – did the corporate talk last week at Eddie that was good. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're in the hunt now for some premises to get open a cafe called Cappuccinos. <laughs> this is a play on words, which yeah. I think. Uh, what's cafe? What, what's going to be uh, the What's going to be the kind of unique selling point of Cappuccino? Yeah, besides myself, probably the, all the memorabilia, all the great photos on the wall. Yeah, they can come in and have a handball competition. And I've got the back of this. I've got a bit of a guy who can back me who's um, done some great, done some great food and had some great cafes. Right. So, so what you're doing really is you, you're kind of constantly looking for opportunities to leverage your name. Is that is that your business? That's probably good. But yeah, but yeah, because um, they probably said my name's probably worth a hundred million dollars. I've had Come probably hundred million dollars. Who said that? Yeah, that's. What, that's what they said in the um, in the book of celebrities. They said yeah. Warwick's had a hundred dollars spent, spent on him, spent on him if he had to pay for it. So it's good to. Have right. a bit of recognition and look at properly. Have, you know? it, sometimes you see celebrities. I know Ian Thorpe years ago, Olympic swimmer Ian Thorpe. He put his name to some pretty crazy stuff. I think like a, it was at one point diamonds. 
uh, and yeah. I think water. Couple, he had a couple of failures. Um, how do you decide? You, do you literally like if someone's got a checkbook and wants to use your name on their product? Do you go, yep, just just write down this number, or do you actually no, st- strategically no, really. look at no, it? No, no. Yeah, yes, I do. Because I'll put a post manager first, and um, yeah, we might, we might not actually do this again and take fifty. It's certainly really good for the branding. Yeah, yeah. Even though I've done mostly of it. I've done most of everything. My, my next one, I'm going to be um, the face of uh, Nanogen, Nanogen Hair Care, where it makes your hair thicker. Because I've got the best mullet in business. You've got a great you know. mullet. You have got a great mullet. So I'm going to be I'm going to be the big Nanogen face, which is you know, it's a good product because I want three guys aboard. So, so, so I think that's fantastic. Yeah, well, so I, yes, yeah, so I believe in that. So. Answer your question. You got to you got to believe in the product. There's no use doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Are, are there any businesses that you specifically own, or is it always you're the marketing angle of of another of someone else's business? Uh, mostly, mostly I do I do it that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mostly, I don't want to put all, all my eggs in one basket. So I just put me down to get get shares in it. Like I'm going to be the face of um, a major shareholder. Man, want to fuss? Which we got we're going to have, we've got four shops now. We're going to have about fifty five shops right. in the next five years. Right. Going global. And we're going to even take it over to um, America and New York in the next five years. Do you ever get involved in the marketing? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's interesting. What's your view on marketing? Oh, I just think trying to stand out, stand out, and have a and be great to your shareholders. Mm-hmm. We treat our, we treat our shareholders like like our children. We look after them, and then, and then they then they stay on board and they keep coming back. What do you do? You be nice to them, and you be, you don't lie to them, and you, be, and you tell them the truth. Yeah, and when you're expanding, you share the profits and you share together. You don't, you don't be too much for tight arts. You look after them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, I've got a question here. For, forum member Arn. Arn owns signatureclothing.com.au. He's a long, long-time listener of this show, uh, Warwick. He says, for some perverse reason, I quite like Warwick. There's not enough bogan, colourful characters in your face crazies around now in this sterile, politically correct world. <laughs> Very well said, young man, and I should be the face of your clothing too, so make sure you give me a ring. Well, he's one of the great... You know, Arn works in the mines by night, and he runs a cl- online clothing company by day. He's a great fella, and I-, I reckon he's right, Warwick. I grew up in an advertising agency where there were characters in the late 80s, early 90s, yeah. and as, as as the world got more serious, as the world got more politically, incorre- politically correct, those characters have disappeared. Yes, it has, especially in the 80s. All, all the 80s characters are gone now. And um, it's all like the play, be a good football, but you also got to mark yourself properly. I also have a bit, bit of a laugh too. Yep. But I can be serious too. So you, know, you might want to use me for his brand. I'd be interested to talk to him. It'd be fantastic. Well, I'd love you to do it for free yep. for Arn because he's such a good bloke. So I'll, I'll, I'll organise good idea, that. Arne. <laughs> yeah, you can't the number and I'll be face signatures too. I love that stuff. Hey, um, what what yeah. was that? I said, good on, good, good on him for liking Albert Cap. It's going to be well, a bit of great, I, isn't it? Well, I do think you know when I talk when I thought about getting you onto this show, um, you know, I would talk to talk to various people, and my view is you have made the most of what you've got, right? And you've really yeah. worked it hard. And other people go, oh yeah, but he's a bit of a duffer, and I go, oh, I don't think he is because you know, it, yeah. it, work with what you got, eh? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really duffer at all. It's it's, it's really um, calculated, and it's um. Knowing how to get the best out of yourself and be a bit different. That's do why I do a different thing. I are you, are you offended by the fact that people think you're a duffer? No, nah, so, yeah. If I, if, I, if I worried about that, I wouldn't get out of bed, would I? Correct. I would be on the street and get, I, I, I would be on the street and get 50 photos and autographs, so they're, they're just a bit jealous. Yeah, correct, you know I mean? correct. I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, when I put things, put things on, my, uh, on my wall and um, Twitter and stuff, you get, you get a fit out of bag, yeah, but you've got to be thick skinned about be a copper, because one guy said yesterday, when I was the face of the boat show, I goes, oh, you're getting a bit old, fella. But that, that happens, and 95% say you're, you're looking great and young, and, and there's always one or two in a bag, yeah? But you just can't be too thick-skinned, you know? Too yeah. thin-skinned, I mean. Too thin-skinned, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I agree. Everyone gets old. Everyone gets old. Just say, portray yourself and try and keep fit. One of the things that I've noticed about the way you've gone about your business, I want to talk about your public speaking career in a moment because I do a lot of speaking as well, but, but one of the things that I've noticed is that you rely... On, a, on the existing media. Geez, you just gave me a heavy breath then, mate. You're not with your, your partner or something, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, was a, that, that was an hour ago. Yeah, I gave it the best 35 seconds of life. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of the things that I... I, uh, yeah, I've completely lost my train of thought then. You, you're killing me. Um, I've, got to tell you, I've got to tell you why I used to wear tight shorts, so just butting in. Well, in the world. Ex- explain the, to overseas listeners this, will you? 
Yeah, because I used to, well, well to have a seat listeners, I'm, I'm actually big in Thailand, which I'm doing a movie in three months called um, My Son the Queen. So you'll see that at the end of the year. So if people don't know me in Thailand and Pakistan or wherever you go, yeah. I used to wear the tightest shorts in the business because I was like a rock star, right? I was yeah. like the Bon Jovi for the AFL. Yeah. And one day, to the listeners, I had to wear baggy shirts, shorts. So I didn't feel comfortable at all. And I had, I had to wear black boots. And I was like, I was really the trailblazer at the AFL. Back in '85, I, yeah. I started it all, or you know, big marketing in AFL. You did. So I, I, I wore the baggy shorts, and I didn't feel comfortable. I went down to pick the ball up. I got a pass off. Um, um, what's his name? Uh, let me think. Greg Williams. Yeah. Two, he won two. Diesel. When the ball dropped about five minutes short, so I went down to pick it up. Instead of one ball being here, there were three bloody balls. <laughs> so luckily, there was two. There's two blue ones and the red Sharon. So I thought, stuff this. I'm going, to, I'm going to make some money out of this. I'm going to be the rock star of the AFL. So I got my son size four shorts. I squeezed in. And the song came out three weeks later. Guess what it was called? Oh, we hate you, Warwick Cappy. Yes, we do. Long blonde. Those cusses in your socks. We even hate the doctor, too. We hate you, Warwick Cappy. Yes, we do. Guess what? What? So uh, 1. 1. 1.3 million were homosexuals. Another 300,000 uh, 300, hated me guts. But... It got me out there. It got I you right out there. there. <laughs> well, isn't that interesting? A pair of tight shorts, and look, look what it's done. A pair of tight shorts and a mullet. Well, I've been out with Simon Oak for a while. And, um, you I, did I, not. For our neighbours in 85, I taught her how to sing and dance. I did. Have a look, have a look on YouTube. It's the you number one show. You're killing me. Then I was a metre maid in the gold, gold shorts, so she copied off me. Listen, what I was going to say to you was that one of the things that interests me is that you you rely a lot on external media. So, you know, I've seen you on all, you know, radio, TV, newspapers, all that, you know, the boat show, all that type of stuff. But yeah. I, I wonder why you don't go, like I have with this show, and create your own media. You know, why, why wouldn't you have the Warwick Kappa YouTube channel that is a show unto of its own? Or why don't you have the Warwick Kappa podcast? You know, you pro- I, I, yeah, you're, more, well, you're better suited I'm to video. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, well, I've got my um, pilot in, in the works now for Fox and there. That might be taken as we speak with a, it's called Warwick's World, which goes around the world. That's what I'm hoping to get. Like because I was the first reality star back in '84. I was on the ABC, um, a show called um, it was called The Fat, and, and I I was the first um, guy to actually do it before Kardashians and Osbournes. It was called The Cappers. I don't know if you remember it, but it's no, I don't. And that's, that's how I started because I'm a bit different. My life's been like a Hollywood movie script, and I had. Um, Episodes on the fat back in '84. Right. Well, that's I, I, again, that's that's relying on someone else's media, but uh, yeah, you know, you, I, I just think you know, there's there's a lot of people out there these days making making money by being their own media, YouTube channel, podcast, whatever it is, and you've got a head start. You know, like I've created I've created a very very small personal brand in a small niche, whereas you've you've got a head start in that you are you do have a name, albeit within. I don't know how far it reaches, whether it goes beyond the boundaries of a few states in Australia that know AFL football or whether you really are big in Thailand or whatever. But I don't know, mate. That's uh, that's my bit of advice. Where do I send the invoice for that bit of advice? Just yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. I'll send my invoice to you. It's usually about 20 grand, mate. I'm over here. <laughs> hey, let's I'm, talk. I'm making you. I'm making you a movie star. You're making me a movie star. Tell, let, public speaking, I do a lot of it. You do a lot of it. I am slowly learning to be good at it. And one of the things that I've discovered over the last couple of years as I do it more is that it's yeah. so important to get your message right. It's so important to get a laugh and so important yeah. to know what the end takeout is going to be for the audience. Now, h- how have you gone? You've got, you'd have a whole lot of gags, but how have you gone about constructing um, a proper... I don't know, presentation, keynote, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, well, I'll answer that question. What I did was, because um, I talked to you fast, I learned to slow down. So I've got a microphone in the stereo uh, in the old mansion up in the Gold Coast. I used to practice in front of the mirror and just try and string it out for 25, 30 minutes. And then I put the, then I put down about 17 key points, which is how I started about 28 years ago. And then I... I went for those key points, and the first 20 shows, we've got 50 shows, pretty ordinary, to tell you the truth. Took me about, took me a couple of years to get the hang of it, at least. Um, you probably agree with it. Mm. And then I, I, went for, I went for my key main points, which, which were on the pedestal. And after about 20 shows, 30, 30, 30 shows, I didn't need to, didn't know that, I didn't need the points, so it was just in my head. Mm-hmm. And I sort of go from, I go from my life where I started now, 
you know, I had a passion to play league football because my dad broke his leg and he missed out, so I wanted to get the name proud. Yep. And I uh, think I achieved that, but it was a lot of hard work and perseverance. And then it was a brand, branding trying to st- stay ahead of everyone else and be a bit different and perform under pressure. Yeah, so you've got you've got a very clear structure in your mind now. Slowing down, Jesus, another 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 heavy breath, mate. You really uh, you need to go for more runs, I reckon. Oh no, I just lost five kilos. I'm getting fit for the EJ Witten game next month. Oh, nice, nice. That will be fun. Lost five kilos. Tell me, I've got uh, last question from forum member uh, here, uh, Kappa. I've got Mark Penny, who's smbcloudadvisor.com. He says. An interesting choice of interview, Timbo. He is a polarising person. I feel there is more to behind the mask than we realise, so we've kind of covered that. He then goes on to say, what advice does Kappa have for people to make the best of a bad situation in business or life? Okay, that's a good one. Well, I reckon always trying to look at the positives because I'm actually the clan doctor too for the Royal Children Hospital, thanks to um, Peter Jess, the manager, and he's my accountant. He said that up for me. And I think there's always someone a lot worse off than you, you know. So try and think of the positives, lock the positives in life mm-hmm. and get the best out of yourself. And it's a pretty terrible economic situation at the moment in Australia. It's really hard hard times. So that, you know, we're one of the highest taxing countries in the world. Mm. And it's not easy to get ahead. So I think you all just got to try and stand out a bit, stand out a bit and be true to yourself. And don't, don't employ too many staff to start off with. Try and do most of yourself. Jeez, mate, you're giving, bus- you're giving business advice now. Oh, well, why wouldn't I? Once I'm in here, keep your overheads down and start off small. Tell me that one last question about businesses. You've got a, a business, I'm not sure how active it is, but Weekend at Warwick's, I think, so, uh, uh, it's a clever little thing. So you charge how much for people to come and live with you for a weekend in the Gold Coast penthouse? Yeah, about five grand. Five That's grand? Another, what, what do they get? small business, money, money well spent. Oh, they get time with me, it's the main thing. Doesn't they matter at the house, really. They get time to come with me and uh, hang out in the Ferrari and the and the hot cars and the hot girls. We go to the we go to Hollywood Hollywood Club. Right. We go take there, take them out for tea, and they have about three day experience with me. I right. Go to the beach, go to the beach with them, have, have a kick of the footy, have a barbecue, watch my favourite highlights, which takes about nine hours because I've done a fair bit. <laughs> I can sit in the lounge room on a 74 inch plaza and go, Kappa, you beauty! <laughs> they would love it. How, like how, often do you, how often do you do it? Uh, I showed the highlights last night to the girlfriend and she goes, I'm not again, Warwick. I said, I just found my ad. Have a look at this. <laughs> and then I was in, in Warwick Kappa Heaven two days ago because Fox Footy loves me. They put me. They put my game on the last two weeks. Like one against Collingwood in 87, I kicked, I kicked a lazy nine, had a bad game. And then, then two days ago, they put Geelong versus Sydney, I kicked six. And it says Warwick Kappa lining up for his 95th goal, 50 metres out. I can't believe it. Straight through. <laughs> that one sailed through. <laughs> that one sailed through, didn't it? I'm surprised myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> you didn't show it though. I did kick, a, I did kick 195 goals in two years, eh? Hey, um, Warwick, uh, everything comes to an end. Um, you know, you love the public life and you've got a whole lot of businesses. Um, do you plan far ahead or do you just, geez, mate, you are breathing as heavy as I reckon anyone I've known. <laughs> That's because I'm, no, I'm, I'm on the handpiece. Well, I was watching my adult movie 10 minutes ago, so I'm very excited. I, 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 I thought you were blow drying the mullet. Yeah, I did have number one uh, movie too, adult movie, which you know that too. Wow, well, anyway, go on, to- tell the listeners. I try to keep it clean, but th- from my understanding, I've heard you <laughs> talk about this to Mike Sheehan. That you- you're talking about an adult movie that got out. Uh, is- this is not your proudest moment, is it? No, that was okay. That was just accidentally, accidentally leaked out like Paris Hilton. The court where I kept the Paris Hilton of Australia. Yeah, yeah. Looking. I must find yeah, that at a- some point. That was unusual, yeah. Went quite well. But getting back to your question, yeah, I plan for the future a bit. I've got a, I've got a couple million dollars of real estate, no debt, so I'm going all right. So you've got to try and look after yourself and plan ahead a bit, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, you do, mate. Well, I, I think one of the things that you have, one of the things that you've done, and I don't know what the what the stats show, but most professional sports people, I'm sure. Go, uh, you know, don't go on and create businesses that see them into the future. They kind of live for the moment. And one of the things that you've done is, you know, you've, you've managed uh, off your own bat. You've created a whole lot of small businesses that have allowed you to, um, I guess, you know, if you say you're debt free and, you know, you've got the yeah. 74 inch plasma, mate. I mean, they're not cheap. Yeah, I've got a house in Q with two million. They've got the Gold Coast penthouse, so it's going okay. Yeah, you've got a house in Q, the, the Catholic Bible Belt of Melbourne. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, fuck you. So it's great. Yeah. <laughs> all, the Chinese, all, all the Chinese love me. I've got a yeah. Chinese tattoo. And, I, and they asked me, my, my neighbour's Chinese, they said, what's your tattoo say, Warwick? And I said, oh, that says number 69, Creamy Young Some Guy. She didn't laugh either. No. Very funny. <laughs> So you've got to laugh at yourself, don't you? Mate, you have got to laugh, and, and, I, and I'm going to thank you, mate, because you've made me laugh over the years. We've never met, but um, you have made me laugh, and I, every time you make me laugh, I ask myself the question as a marketing guy, you know, is he funny? Did anyone see me laugh? I often look around to see if anyone saw me laugh. No, I've got a million shows, and if they don't laugh at me, jokes, I laugh at them, I laugh at them anyway, and I say... Well, I thought it was funny. You don't like it, bad luck. And then I used, to, I, used to work, I used to work with Chopper Roos, and I used to say, well, if you don't, yeah, when, when Chopper was alive, he, I said, well, if you don't laugh at his jokes, he'll cut your ears off. So it doesn't worry me. So you've got to start laughing. I <laughs> agree. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. I didn't even know how to get out of that interview. It was uh, he, He's a funny fellow and good on him. He's Warwick the Wiz is having a real crack. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Before I share my top three learnings, I want to tell you about a little secret that smart business owners everywhere are on to. Have you got marketing materials lying around that need a little tweaking? Maybe the details on your stationery need a bit of updating. Maybe your logo needs pimping. Maybe your social media headers need a little bit of design love. No worries at all. That'll be 19 US dollars and it'll be done in an hour thanks to swiftly.com. Small design fixes fast. That's exactly how they roll. You upload your artwork that needs fixing. Tell them what needs doing. And within less than an hour... And 19 US dollars later, it's done. Check them out at swiftly.com. That's S W I F T L Y dot com. Righto, team. So, uh, Warwick Kappa, hey? I'd love to know what your learning was from it. Maybe some of you are going, oh, I got nothing from that. But have an open mind. This is a guy who is having a crack, he's making the best of what he's got. My top three takeaways are. Look for every opportunity to promote your business. And boy, oh boy, did Walker do that. He, you know, even talking about seeding up front. I mean, he's dropping domain names. He's, oh, he just loves it. He just loves he's, he's a hustler. Number two, seek out podcast interviews. I've said this before. Um, many wouldn't. I, you know, I wasn't sure whether Kappa would say, yeah, I'll come on your show or not, but he did, and good on him. Again, he takes the opportunities when they're there because they might not be there tomorrow. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Number three, stop relying on other people's media and create your own. I am surprised that Warwick isn't creating more of his own media. He relies a lot on other people's media and he gets good coverage. Uh, in fact, he was on the radio tonight just just before I um, just before I went to record this episode. But uh, I do think he should uh, spend some time and dough in creating his own. U- I think a YouTube channel would be a good thing for him because uh, he's quite a visual character. Them are top three learnings. Would love to know what yours are. Go to the uh, smallbusinessbigmarketing.com website, head over to episode 194, and let me know what you thought of the whiz. Righto, team. That's it. That is enough. Get inside the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. Take some swift action now. And uh, I'd love to see you in there. I'm in there every day answering your questions and supporting you in your marketing journey. A big thank you to Net Registry. They get your online marketing sorted swiftly. Well, they do small design fixes real fast and real cheap. Upcoming guests, what about this? Two young ladies who convinced me that sex sells. <laughs> like I needed convincing. A couple of travel bloggers that are living the dream and a fellow who's making a fortune reviewing frozen foods. Interesting, and that's his second job. So lots of interesting guests coming up. Enough. I'm Timbo Reed, and you have been smart enough to tune in to the world's number one small business marketing show. May your marketing be the best marketing. See you next week. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reed. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Yeah, we're a cover. 
AFL legend and movie star. Their rooms are great rates, they're cheap and easy, just like me.